and hello welcome everyone you, uh, YouTube welcome to this video of uh, open form heat transfer so in this video we want to continue where we left off because the last time uh, there was an error okay there was some error um, there was some error in the the code and it wasn't running properly so we need to continue some debugging now one thing to note um, in the last video um, actually made a mistake because I copied over the alpha t boundary condition to omega uh, and there's an add here okay so just ignore that uh, but basically there, there was something I needed to do so I needed to uh, change the change dictionary uh, entries to like to something like so where there is a separate uh, entry for omega and a separate entry for alpha t okay so this is alpha t alpha t is the uh, turbulent parental number oh no it's not turbulent parental number turbulent thermal diffusivity okay so we will we will put at every every uh, surface not just the oil to sphere but actually you know uh, between the oil and the sphere there is a wall boundary and also within the cube of this uh, case they, they, these are also wall boundaries so all of them basically have to be wall boundary conditions so uh, I have I have over here the omega boundary condition uh, this is uh, named as no, all of this have to be you know oil to sphere and uh, everything oil to sphere and in fact every single boundary will be the omega wall function will not be the alpha t wall function that was a mistake probably was too sleepy but uh, yeah this this is the correct more correct boundary condition for omega in fact there's something else I need to edit over here but I'll just run it first and I'll tell you what the problem is in a bit and likewise for new t at every boundary um, you should have a new t wall function that will tell you the value of new t uh, at the first cell of the wall so this is the correct change dictionary uh, dot dict and that should help it to run so I'm going to run a all run serial pre so that will help us with the meshing alright and after that we'll try and run CHT multi region form and we'll try to see what is the actual problem all right what's the actual problem with running this thing and let's see whether you know um, we still run into issues here so let's see how the snappy hex mesh is going okay so this thing is actually uh, taking about yeah this thing takes about let's see 18 seconds to finish 20 seconds to finish not too much we can go and do a check mesh again to see how many cells there are now now uh, we have about 170 180,000 cells okay, it's not very small but not very big as well okay so let's try CHT multi-region foam and we run into some error here now what is this error actually you know when you when you see all of these numbers pop out uh, it's not very telling of what this error is so let's go and uh, do something we know that works okay so the debugging process is roughly like so okay we go to a we can change the simulation type to Reynolds average Navier Stokes the RAS model We'll, we'll change the model here to um, k epsilon why am I doing k epsilon because this uh, case the template for this case was originally k epsilon so if I run this again if I run this again I'll actually see the the numbers running of course this is actually unstable case so you see after a few steps of time steps of running you will start to have uh, things like negative temperatures and again you'll see yeah but as you can see uh, when we have this sort of numerical errors where the where the solver kind of blows up you will have 
these sort of errors here. So what could possibly be wrong? Because uh, we are using uh, we are using a solver, okay? So I actually changed. I added the RAS entry here just for comparison for debugging purposes. Now of course now uh, I, and I was using the K Omega SST RAS model because the the way we we. The way we uh, do inputs for both the KOmega SST and KOmega SST IDDES is very remarkably similar. Only the mesh size needs to be different, if I'm not wrong, and of course the the stuff, the entries over here will be different. But anyhow, uh, if I change this back to LES and we try this, okay, we will run into a numerical er error. So CHT multi region foam. And take a look again this this funny error actually comes out so what is this error actually talking about if we uh, take a look at closely at our boundary condition you'll notice something that's a bit off if you know the k omega model actually so this is something for you to take note of for k omega model okay change dictionary dictionary um what what actually went wrong here uh, after i tried to you know uh, make all the boundary conditions correct with the, with the wall because uh, in the last video I, I only did it for the oil to sphere and everything else was you know calculated boundary condition but now I applied wall functions to every single of this boundary so what actually is wrong well uh, we cannot have a case where omega equals to zero what does omega equals to zero mean uh, omega equals to zero means that uh, the, the turbulent dissipation rate is zero okay uh, or in other words like so okay omega sst model autodesk let's go to sim scale maybe i'll use the sim scale one so this is the k omega sst model there are lots of videos you can go and check out online so where do we find this k omega sst Okay, this is not very descriptive. Let's go to, uh, yeah, CFD online is better. Let's go to CFD online. You can see what are the underlying equations. As you can see, uh, omega is here, and the eddy viscosity, okay, the eddy viscosity or new t, new t rather, is actually some combination of uh, k over the maximum of this omega or this f2 function f2 this f2 is actually a wall function but you can see either way when omega equals to zero okay if omega equals to zero this a1 omega term will become zero so you have k over zero which is you know infinity so that's not good likewise if you see f2 you see a hyperbolic tangent of something and that something is the maximum of these two things here and again, you see here that omega is in the denominator. And you try to compute that uh, with omega equals zero, you're going to get some error uh, over there. All in all, what it, what it means is this. Omega cannot be zero. Okay? Omega cannot be zero. Uh, okay, so um, that is basically what this, this, uh, this, this is talking about. So uh, let's... let's let's move omega from a uniform value of zero so this this is actually the initial condition uh, omega cannot be zero anymore i'll put omega equals to 0 0.2 at least something that is not zero okay so uh, after doing that i need to run change dictionary again with the region oil now if you forget this again you can always check log change dictionary oil you can see here under execute the line execute this is the actual command that's being run change dictionary uh, with the flag region and you put oil so we're going to run exactly that region change dictionary with the region of oil and change dictionary has run successfully now the boundary conditions are changed we can try to run this uh, case and what we see, all right. Once once we got that uh, omega not equals to zero, now this thing actually will run beautifully. 
at least for the first few time steps. Now again, again you see there is some numerical error because uh, we didn't you know, adjust the mesh properly or we didn't, and we didn't check the, the validity of each of these boundary conditions. So there is of course an error, numerical error in fact. Well, one of the things we can do is to make the mesh coarser because when you have a when you have a very very fine mesh near the boundaries, okay, between uh between the boundaries near the wall, when you have very fine mesh there, okay, um, what what happens is this. Let's hmm, what happens is this. Let's see. Uh, okay, create a new one. I'll say okay. Okay, so you have a you have a you have one cell off the wall, okay, and this one is like at T two, and the rest of the fluid is at maybe this thing called T F, okay. How is heat flux uh calculated? Heat flux is calculated uh like so. Okay, minus k dt dx, and how is this uh derivative approximated? Is actually okay, T two minus tf over this delta x here okay this delta x here so this is just one of many examples all right when you make your delta x when you make your delta x really really small when you make your delta x really 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 small and fine chances are that this this uh heat flux term will actually shoot uh shoot up exponentially and that is just not physical. That's not physically correct. So there, there is some uh, wacky numerics going on. And to sort of deal with it, one of the ways is to uh, make your, make your uh, delta x a bit bigger, which is to uh, make a cost mesh, at least to start this thing off. And that will actually help uh, with the numerical stability issues. Okay, so now this thing is actually uh, going bonkers, which is not good. So uh, one of the things we can do is to make the mesh coarser. How do we make the mesh coarser? Okay, uh, well, let's, let's just do something first before we do that. I want to rename fine mesh sphere oil LES as coarse mesh sphere oil LES. Okay, I want to say this is a coarse mesh. So let's go to the cost mesh case. I have a cost mesh uh, sphere oil lamina over here. Okay, and this will go. I'll go to system and I want to see their block mesh dictionary. Uh, so this is 30 by 30 by 30. Uh, let's see whether I can apply this same mesh over because uh, I want to check two things I need to check for mesh fi uh, fineness. One is block mesh. One is the snapping X mesh. So it looks like the block mesh here is kind of the same. Okay, the cost mesh sphere oil, uh, yes, the block mesh here is the same, 30, 30, 30. Okay, so that's not the, that's not the thing. So I need to go and look at snappy X mesh. So let's take a look at snappy X mesh. Okay, snappy X mesh dictionary. All right. Uh, I have an extra refinement cylinder here. Okay. And where is that? Yes, I have an extra refinement cylinder here. The mode is inside, and I ex refine an extra two times. And for the cost mesh, I only refine the sphere one time only. So I'm going to I'm going to change this out to one time each the refinement level to one time each level one and the cylinder I'm going to comment it out okay okay so that is it let's do another uh, I'm gonna uh, do a meshing all run serial pre all the code is in there already and this should run a lot faster than the last time round okay so now it is fully meshed 
uh, we can do a check mesh to see how many cells there are and this time there are only about uh, 30,000 cells which is a lot less this is very very coarse so um, what I can do now is do a CHT multi-region foam to see if this is numerically stable alright uh, okay so again it looks like we have some problem and it looks like it cannot be solved with uh, a mere changing of the mesh we will need to do a few other things to tweak this solution likely it's due to the the way the boundary conditions are being set and yeah for that uh, I guess we'll, we'll uh, continue in the next video but hopefully this this was a uh, this was okay this was like you no know, editing more of the editing more of the uh, boundary conditions uh, to show you you know you cannot put Omega at zero if not you'll have some funny problems okay um that's one uh yeah the second thing it's like okay you you have this uh, numerical instabilities happening uh perhaps I'm not too sure why um but we have to go we can i guess the debugging steps are just to go through uh some of the possible causes one of them being the mesh being too fine so we eliminated that already so we'll need to look for other causes in the next video and see whether you know uh we can get this uh, case working okay so that's all I have. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. Okay, bye-bye.